Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got Jack here. And Jack is our uh, very nervous, panicky new student. And this is going to be his first actual session of training, um, just starting some basic leash work, what we call conversational leash work. And uh, we have him on a prong collar right now. A lot of people think that's counterproductive for dealing with a nervous dog. And most certainly, if I were to use the prong collar in the traditional sense of giving big, jerking leash corrections, um, it would definitely make him more nervous or more tense. The idea here with conversational leash work is the communication is much more subtle. The reason I like the prong collar is it allows me to get his attention or get a little bit of motivation out of him with far less physical force. So the idea is to use the minimal amount of force here and to really allow him to think through his decisions and make choices on his own. My experience with nervous dogs and using a flat collar or often uh, a slip lead at times is because it requires a little bit more actual um, pressure on the leash. That feeling of being pulled um, almost makes them feel, feel trapped or feel manipulated a bit more um, and it actually tends to, to make them a little bit more nervous. So I like using the prong collar because I can be extremely, extremely subtle on the leash, which is what you're going to see here. And you can still grab his attention. You can see he's a bit nervous of me still. We haven't done any work with this guy yet. Came in yesterday, and all we did was uh, get him out in the environment a little bit and kind of see what we're working with. So I'm just going to start him with some basic leash work to get him going on understanding how to walk nicely with me and follow me. That's the basis of attention and learning is to follow my lead. And then hopefully get him started on a little bit of a place command as well, which is a good foundation for boundary training and self-control and for learning some stability. So uh, here we go. show him that the pressure is not about reward and punishment as much as it's about feedback and information to help guide him through the world. The more feedback we can give the dog, the better position he's in to make choices about the world. And for a nervous dog, the more information they have, often the more secure they are. So it's important for us to have a means to give the dog feedback about the parts of behavior that we're not looking for, as well as the parts of behavior that we are looking for, so that they can be confident that they know what to expect. Uh, you can see he's still not totally comfortable with my touch, so I'm not going to touch him too much. It's always good to be aware of when you're working with a nervous dog. If that dog does not see your touch as rewarding, then we don't want to use physical praise as a reward. Okay, It's not going to be beneficial. The dog has to actually want it. The dog has to actually um, see it as reinforcing. Otherwise, it's actually punitive, right? If he comes to me and does not want me to touch him, and every time he does what I want, I touch him, pretty soon he's going to stop doing what I want because it winds up being a negative thing for him. And that's really what we want to start to accomplish. So you can see he's already following me much more. If you look at the video that we took yesterday, where he's just kind of all over the place and panicking and uh, not really making very good choices, you'll see quite a big difference here already. We also notice his tail is in a more relaxed position than it was prior to starting training and prior to him being on the prong collar. So just on the regular flat collar, his tail was very tucked when he was working with me. And now it's still low. He's not 100% secure, but he's starting to get more relaxed as he feels like he's gaining more information about the environment. We're going to start using that communication to help him learn the activity of placing all four feet on an object. And the first step of that is just making sure he's not going to be overly afraid of this object. It can be a little bit freaky for some dogs, so I'm not going to force him over it. I want him to see me step on it, so he sees that it's not going to explode when he steps on it. And at first I'm just going to guide him near it and encourage him in this direction, but never force him 
he really needs to overcome this on his own and gain security on his own. Our job is to really be his guide, and as his guide, we have to show him that when he follows our lead, he has nothing to worry about. So again, a little bit of tension here, never forcing. I can lower my body language down, be less confrontational, and now I just wait. And again, not a whole lot of tension here, holding with my fingertips. That's just a waiting game. Now, if he shifts a little bit, I'm gonna relax my tension. Even if he goes around the board, because at least it's a, it's a try, it's an effort. We always wanna reinforce efforts especially for a guy like this. Good. So even right there, he went from resisting and being stiff to relaxing and moving. And that is always a step in the right direction. Good boy. Good. So by just taking our time with him and not forcing him, he was able to really do it on his own. Heel. Place command is a great way to get the understanding that pressure means make a different choice and the release of pressure means you're doing a good job. You also see it now that he's here, he's already starting to get a little bit more comfortable with my touch. All right, he's starting to trust me a little bit more, stabilize a little bit more in general. Heel. So it's not about punishment right now. It's not really about reward right now either. It's about giving a clear language, using the leash as a source of feedback, both positive and negative. Um, and later on, you know, praise and food can be part of that feedback as well, but if we stay so stuck in the paradigm of everything has to happen through big rewards and big consequences, you really limit your communication quite a bit. And uh, it tends to be the case that the more you use big rewards and big consequences, the more you need to use big rewards and big consequences. So the idea is to just have a basis of trust and respect and communication to have a dog just be able to follow our lead in general. Heel. And that's usually what I try and accomplish in my first session with conversational leash work. I want the dog to be able to start with me, to turn with me, to stop with me, and to go to an object and stay there. He doesn't have to do it all to the verbal command yet. That takes a lot of repetition. Uh, but to be able to do it with my guidance and do it without stress and do it without too much resistance uh, is usually what we're looking for. And then probably by the next session, he'll be ready to start adding in some more food reward um, to make the whole process a little bit more enjoyable for him. And um, we're not gonna be overly dependent on the food, but we do like to use it, especially with nervous guys, to help uh, bring a little bit of dopamine into the system and, and uh, make them feel good about, about what they're doing. All right, boy, you ready for a break? <laughs>